we're going to go ahead and just get started. I, I'm going to do the scripture reading. So, um, anyways, I uh, want to say that the name of this sermon, Ready, Set, a Ready, Seal, Come, is, a, is a, just a play off Ready, Set, Go. All right? That's where I came up with this. Ready, seal, come. Um, let's turn our Bibles to the back of the three. I, uh, as you're turning there, I just want to talk to you guys for a minute. Um, when I go to these, and, and, and you two gals, that, that is so powerful. Wow. Rose, I don't know how you hold it together to say those words. I mean, can you imagine having to come back to be there? Whew. Anyways, I want to tell you guys that I brag about our church everywhere I go. And uh, my wife counseled me to keep my mouth shut and not say anything on this line, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh. Then keep your mouth shut. You know, we came up with these wonderful dinner plans that we do. And, and when I go and I talk, to people in other churches about what we do, they're encouraged, and they want to do these same things. You mean you have a, a your first Sabbath is completely vegetarian, you know, and that's it? And, and I say, yeah. And then on the third <coughs> Sabbath, you have a vegan <coughs> Sabbath meal, a fellowship meal, and I say, yeah. And people are really encouraged about that, and I tell them about the cooking classes that we had and how... Lots of people are, how many people you have in your class? About 24. 24 people. That, that, that's wonderful. <coughs> people that are learning to, to cook healthy and, and, and do, better, do better with themselves. And that's wonderful. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because what I don't say to those people is that, that you know, some of our vegan stuff is kind of <laughs> slipping a little bit. You know? On vegan Sabbath, the third Sabbath, it's supposed to be vegan. But that doesn't mean, you know, foods that have all that other junk in it. Okay? So, I, you know, I think we can do better. And we should do better. Maybe I should listen to my wife and not go here. But I'm going here. Because I, I see the table filled with desserts that I know aren't vegan. So, I mean, it, it, I realize people are busy and they... they they don't have a lot of time to do things. So, you know, just bring fruit or something. Or, or vegetables or whatever. It's, it's, it's really easy. It's not that difficult. What do you bring, Ray? What do I bring? My <laughs> wife brings. <laughs> <them. laughs> hey, once, once in a while, um, you know, when we have haystacks, I make my special salad dressing and it's all vegan. So, anyways. Walk a mile in there, she is. Pardon me? Walk a mile in their shoes. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. That's why I said I know it's not easy. So, but but I, I want you guys to know that it's a ministry that you're doing, and it's a wonderful thing, and people are encouraged by this. When I tell people what we're doing, they're all excited. Well, I wish we could do that in our church. There, those people, there's no way we could do that here in our church. You know, that's what people, a lot of people say. We want to get there. So so we're we're setting a standard. You know what I mean? This is, this is a good thing. I think we should continue. Anyways, Habakkuk. Ready? Seal, come. Habakkuk 3. I'm going to read 17 to 19. Although the fake book, you guys realize it's 1149. Yeah. And I'm just reading scripture. Okay? So you have 10 minutes. So be, be kind. So you got 10 minutes. <laughs> Although the fig tree <laughs> shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herds in the stall. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds' feet, and he will make me to walk upon the high places to the chief singer on my, on my stringed instruments. Amen. Amen. We're going to be going through some hard times here, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, 
it's an interesting time that we're now living in. Uh, I, I don't want to go through and break down everything that, that the Pope has said, but I did catch some of the things that he said to Congress. And, you know, basically we're looking at him saying that we should legislate more out. How well did that work in the past? Do we remember the French Revolution? Brothers and sisters, that was a microcosm. That's the tenth of the city that fell. That, that, that's going to be a world scene. I don't know if you're familiar with history and how wicked and horrible that was, the French Revolution. But that's going to be on a worldwide scale. And it's because people have learned nothing from history. We're getting right back into bed again with the beast. Anyways, let's turn to Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah 5. 5 and verse 20. When you get there to say it, yeah? Amen. Amen. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not, fear ye not me, saith the Lord, will, not, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea, by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet they cannot prevail. Though they war, yet can they not pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are, revol they are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, which giveth rain, both the former and the latter in his seasons. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. From among my people are found wicked men that lay wait, as he set snares that set a trap that catch men. And a cage is full of birds, so as their houses full of deceit, therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and the people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? This is terrifying scripture. Look at us today. Are not the rich getting richer? And on the backs of what? The poor? This, this, is, this is a horrible situation that we're in today. But we brought this upon ourselves. Because it said, what are we listening to? Who do we believe? Why did the people, brothers and sisters, come to America? Why did we come here? And were we not all foreigners? You know, I, I don't understand the religious right, and I'm not trying to be political here, but why are they giving such a hard time to bringing some people over here that are suffering persecution? They're supposed to be the religious right? Do they not care that people's babies are being slaughtered? What, was, what were these borders set up for? Doesn't the Bible say that the earth opened up and saved the woman? Right? It was pursued by the dragon. Aren't we some of those people? Weren't our forefathers some of those people? You know, I'm not saying I agree with Obama and everything, but my, can't somebody give him a break somewhere? 
<laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I just don't understand. There's so much confusion. People are being so taught how to think that they don't even think for themselves. This is a pitiful situation that we find ourselves in. You know, and we're listening to the wrong people. Most certainly so. Let us turn our Bibles to Matthew 3. I want to begin in verse 5. <coughs> they went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And who, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth not fruit, wait, wait a minute. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. What does this tell you? This scene here. Did... Yeah, it definitely, it doesn't say the word judgment, but there's judgment there, isn't there? Most well, certain. Um, these people come, the scribes and the Pharisees, what are they looking for? It's, it's just a show to them, isn't it? They come out to see the carnival show. Because what's in their heart? But look, look, who did Jesus, who was comfortable around Jesus? The ones that knew they were sinners. The sinners. The supposed religious people. How were they? Well, they had big problems with Jesus, didn't they? They called him. Uh, what were they? What were some of the words they called him? Yeah. Why would they were? We know who our father is. They said. And, you know. What were they? What were they saying? Yeah. What were they saying? I'm going to bring this all in together, but I, I want to feed you with a bunch of scripture, just a whole bunch of scripture, because we don't have a lot of time. But these things, hang them in memories hall, because uh, it's all going to come together here. We got to remember that just because somebody looks nice, okay? And they may have a beautiful entourage all around them. And they may say really wonderful, nice things on the surface if you look. Because if you really dig deep, you may find another thing. But most people don't think too deeply anymore. Because we're so dumbed down by the television. Every scene changes every few seconds. You know, just like your cell phone and everything. Nothing captures your attention anymore. Not, not the things of God, not deep study. We must have God not just in our head, but in our heart of hearts. Amen. It needs to be Amen. both places, brothers and sisters. Amen. It needs to be solidified. We need to have this understanding that goes deeper than just this, this mental ascent that the scribes and Pharisees had. You see, the scribes and Pharisees loved the outward adorning. But they were dead men inside. That's what Jesus said. He said, you are filled with dead men's bones. White-walled sepulchers. So just because somebody looks really nice, and they tell you, hey, 
this is the way. Go on down here and then maybe take a right at such and such a street and go a little bit further and you'll come to a dead end and then you take a left and you'll be there. And you follow just what the guy said because he looked nice. He sounds good. And you get there and you find yourself in hell. You find yourself in hell. What is really important is, thus saith the Lord, Amen. the Bible. This, this is Jesus Christ on earth, brothers and sisters. Do you understand Amen. that? Amen. Amen. This Amen. is Him on earth. Amen. Okay? We, He is physically in heaven. We are physically on earth. But in heaven, we are in books. Do you see? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. And he, the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out. It's going to be poured out in an amazing way. And soon, very soon. You know? And, and I hope and pray that you're going to be a part of that. I hope and pray that you're not going to be so full of yourself and your deception that you miss the heavenly glory that God has for all of us. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Mark. I'm going to try to keep this short, you guys. I promise. I think we started late. Mark 11, 12 through 14. We're going to read. And this is the fruitless fig tree. Is what I have as a heading for this. Okay? And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off, Having leaves, he came. See, it having leaves presupposes that there's figs. You follow me? If happily he might find anything thereon, and we, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. But a deeper study of this will find that yes, the time of figs was not. For most trees that were out there. But there were trees, like we have fruit trees here in Florida, that give their fruit early, right? Their leaves were full. Jesus went to this tree, figuring to find fruit, because it had the luscious leaves on it. So it should have the fruit, but it didn't. So what does it say here in 14? And Jesus answering, answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. The only thing you find in Scripture that Jesus cursed is this fig tree. Why do you suppose he cursed this fig tree? Because it gave the appearance of fruit, but there was no fruit. What do you think the scribes and Pharisees are represented as? This fig tree. Huh. They claim all oh, the beautiful leaves. See me? But no fruit. You see, the problem with the scribes and the Pharisees is they like to hang fruit on themselves. So to speak. <coughs> Look like a little Christmas tree with nice little ornaments all over me, huh? Ain't that beautiful? But inside, death. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't want to scare you too bad, but stop and think about Laodicea. What does Laodicea mean? It means God judges his people. What does God say about Laodicea? We need to be very, very careful. Bless you. Wow, what do you call that? I think a spirit just moved in here or something that went out. Revelation 3, 14. Laodicea, Revelation 3 and 14. Y'all there? And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy work, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. I, you know, I thought about that this morning when I got into my hot tub. I wrote this thing up and I, and I 
had my quiet time during the time in the hot tub. I love the hot tub. But it, I, I realized something this morning after studying this and thinking about that hot water, because that water's hot. You can't just kind of gently get into hot water. You know what I mean? You can't just gently get into cold water. You're not going to do it. But you can gently get into lukewarm, can't you? Ooh, this is comfortable. Nice. But hot water or cold water, you got to get in. If you're going to do it, you got to get in. you got to go. Stop and think about that for a second. I'm going to read this again. 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see as many as I love. I rebuke and chasten thanks, thank God, and zealous therefore, be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome, overcame, and then sit down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is a this is a, a, a very strong rebuke, brothers and sisters. And, and I believe that Laodicea is you and I. There is, no, there is no eighth church. The seventh church is Laodicea. And brothers and sisters, I don't know if you're paying attention to what's going on in the world around you, but we are certainly living in the last days. This is it. This is where it's wrapping up. Rapidly wrapping up. So we need to take this counsel and say to the Lord, look, you know, we need to say, yes, I am blind. I am naked. I need you. Without you, I grope in the dark. We need to be dependent upon God. If we're going to make it through this horrible situation that we're going to have to go through, we have got to be dependent upon God. Look, Jesus was very dependent on, on the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we, brothers and sisters, are going through the Garden. Whether you like it or not, there is no whisking away as most churches will teach. You're just going to be gone. And if you're not, it's okay because you still have time. Boy, isn't that a lie. <coughs> isn't that a lie, Lord, the pit of hell? Let's turn our Bibles to Revelation 3. Now we do that. Philippians. Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. I pray that's the way it is. Brothers and sisters, I want to say that Laodicea <coughs> has a heart problem. Okay? We have a heart problem. Now, he said that Laodicea was lukewarm, right? Now, lukewarm is what? It's not hot, and it's not cold. It's a mixing of the two, right? That's what lukewarm is. When Kyla fills up her tub, she likes Laodicea in water. <laughs> she fills up her tub. She throws on the hot, and she throws on the cold. But what are we talking about when we say hot and cold? What is hot? <coughs> Can I say it in the Adventist church? In Laodicea, what's hot? What's cold? Take a look. Hmm. Do we have lots of words? Where is our heart? Where is our heart of hearts? 
Listen, Ricky's sermon next week is going to be. Here's your time, brother. What is it? Oh my goodness, right? <laughs> you asked me to do this, and I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, this is Judas. And. Uh, Sin oh. in the camp. Sin in the camp. Okay. Sin in the camp. I hope there isn't sin in your camp. If there is, you need to extinguish it. All right. Let's let's turn our Bibles to Mark. Mark chapter seven. And I'm going to read from 6 to 9. He answered and said unto them, Well hath the Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups. And many other such things like ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye have rejected the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Brothers and sisters, is there anything wrong with tradition? No. But what if tradition trumps the word of God? Isn't that what Jesus was talking about? No. This is what they did. They followed the traditions of men. You never once in your whole entire Bible will find Jesus saying, Rabbi such and such said this. Never once. Jesus always says, it is written, it is written, it is written. And what's he talking about? He's talking about a revelation of himself. This is him, right? These 66 books all end. In, in revelation. And revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the whole Bible is about Jesus. And that's what we want to do today is lift up Jesus. We don't want to lift up traditions. And we're not going to legislate morality. We've seen what happened in the dark ages. We're going back there, brothers and sisters. I hope you realize we're going there. That doesn't mean you have to follow the beast into the darkness. Amen. Come out of her, my people, and be ye separate. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says. How often do we eat, brothers and sisters, spiritually and intellectually? We must be fortified if we expect <coughs> to be sealed. We must be fortified. Listen, if, if I expect to become strong, like my, my, my niece, Jessie,